रिफ्रेक्शन थ्रू रिफ्रेक्शन थ्रू स्फेरिकल स्फेरिकल सर्फेस वी हैव टू सी द रिफ्रेक्शन थ्रू स्फेरिकल सर्फेस लुक हियर आई एम राइटिंग है रिफ्रेक्शन थ्रू स्पेरिकल सर्फेस लेटर सपोज इट इज इट इज अ कन्वेक्स सर्फेस एंड इट इज योर यू कैन एज्यूम एज द होल इज दिस क्लियर माई डियर स्टूडेंट एंड इट इज योर फर्स्ट मीडियम दैट हैज द रिफ्लेक्टिव इंडेक्स यू वन एंड इट इज योर सेकेंड मीडियम इट इज सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर सी एंड इट इज प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस इट इज प्रिंसिपल नाउ लेटर सपोज इन दिस केस एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज केप्ड एट पॉइंट ओ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज केप्ड एट पॉइंट ओ इन दिस केस ए रे ऑफ लाइट इज फॉलिंग ऑन दिस सर्फेस ऑन दिस सर्फेस एट पॉइंट एट पॉइंट लेटर से एट पॉइंट ए सो वेयर विल बी नॉर्मल नॉर्मल विल ऑलवेज पास थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर Always pass through the center of curvature. Since I am saying, my dear student, mu two is greater than mu one. So what happens in this case? Ray of light is moving from rarer medium to denser medium. So refracted ray will bend towards the non. It is your refracted ray. Is it clear? It is angle of incidence I, and it is angle of refraction. Angle of refraction. secondary i am i am falling 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 in direction of this principal axis so angle of incidence in this case is zero so angle of refraction will also be zero it will pass in a straight line without deviation both the refracted ray are meeting at this point so here the image of object will pass means we are keeping object here at point o and image is forming at point i is it clear now look here i am saying that let this object this incident ray make an angle alpha with principal axis and this image make an angle beta with principal axis and this normal make an angle gamma with principal axis so in triangle i am saying here in triangle in triangle o a c i am writing here in triangle o a o a c i is the outer angle i is the outer angle so the outer angle will be equal to the sum of two interior angle means i will be equal to alpha plus gamma so in this case case i will be equal to alpha plus gamma now i am taking here triangle it is equation number 1 triangle triangle a c i so triangle a c i in triangle a c i what we get is look here it is the gamma which is outer angle of this triangle a c i a c i and outer angle will be always sum of two interior angle means r plus beta so here gamma will be equal to gamma will be equal to r plus beta so what will be r in this case r will be equal to this will come in this side gamma minus gamma minus beta so angle of refraction is gamma minus beta whereas angle of incidence is alpha plus gamma now i am applying here snell snell snell's law what is snell's law tell me it is step 1 i am writing here student it is step 1 and it is step 2 apply the snell's law what is the what is the generalized form of snell's law snell's law is mu1 sin i is equal to the mu2 sin mu2 sin r if angle is too small so in this case it can be written as sin i will be written as i and sin r will be written like r 
so i am keeping here the value of sin i that is equal to i so it will be mu1 into i and this will be equal to mu2 into mu2 into mu2 into let us see it is equation number equation number now i am keeping the value of i and r in equation number 3 so what we get means from equation from equation or i am writing here put the value put the value value of i and r in equation in equation 3 in equation 3 we get what we get look here we get my dear student mu1 mu1 alpha plus gamma mu1 alpha plus gamma and this will be equal to mu2 i am keeping the value of value of r value of r that is gamma minus beta so it will be gamma minus beta it is equation number equation number 4 now look here step 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 3 it is step step 3 so i am writing here step 3 look in step 3 i am drawing a perpendicular for, uh, from point a and this perpendicular is am means am is the perpendicular on oc tell me what will be value of tan alpha and we will we know that angle will be too small then this tan alpha will be equal to equal to what what will be firstly we have to find out tan alpha okay so what will be tan alpha in this case perpendicular this is alpha angle alpha and i am taking here the tan alpha tan alpha will be equal to perpendicular upon base this side in front of angle will be perpendicular and this will be your base means it will be equal to perpendicular upon base and what is perpendicular in this case perpendicular is am so i am writing here am and what is base base is o o m so i am writing here o o m is it clear now if m is very near to p so we can write we can write o n will be nearly equal to equal to p o so i am writing here am upon p o and what is p o p o is the distance of object from pole and we know that distance of object from pole pole is written like am upon u and it will be your negative i am applying the sign convention here now when angle is too small so this tan alpha this tan alpha will be nearly equal to nearly equal to alpha means this is the value of this is the value of alpha now what will be tan beta tan beta in this case will also be equal to look here this is this is angle beta tan beta will be equal to perpendicular upon b and perpendicular in this case is am and base in this case is m i and this will be equal to am upon m i will be nearly equal to p i so i am writing here p i and it will be equal to am upon b and it will be your positive and when angle is too small so tan beta can be written like beta now look here the the tan gamma if we will find the value of tan gamma tan gamma in triangle this one amc tan gamma will be equal to perpendicular upon base and perpendicular is am and base is how much tell me mc and this will be equal to am upon radius of curvature r and it will also be positive and tan gamma will be nearly equal to gamma nearly equal to gamma now put the value of alpha beta and gamma in equation 4 so i'm going to keeping the value of i am going to keep the value of uh, alpha beta and gamma in equation 4 so so i am writing here 
so i am writing here from equation from equation from equation 4 we get what we get uh, equation 4 is mu 1 alpha plus gamma and this will be equal to mu 2 gamma minus beta i am keeping here the value it will be mu 1 the value of alpha is how much value of alpha is am upon minus u plus what is the value of gamma in this case the value of gamma is am a m upon and uh, gamma is equal to am upon a and it is mu 2 and what is the value of gamma in this case gamma is gamma is how much am upon am upon r and uh, what is the value of um, beta beta is equal to am upon b so it will be minus am upon am upon is it clear i am taking here am as a comma i am taking am as a comma and this am also as a comma so this equation will be equal to am multiply mu1 here in this expression it will be mu1 upon minus u plus mu1 upon r and this will be equal to am am i am multiplying mu2 here it will be mu2 upon r minus mu2 upon b this will be cancel out and finally we get finally we get look here finally we get in this equation finally we get mu1 uh, mu1 upon minus u plus it will be mu1 upon r will be equal to mu2 upon r minus minus mu2 mu2 upon b i am carrying this in L, uh, lhs and this one is rhs what we get we get it is negative so it will be positive mu2 upon b minus mu1 upon u mu1 upon u will be equal to mu2 upon r minus mu1 upon final final result we are getting final result we are getting final result we are getting mu2 upon g minus mu1 upon u will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon is it clear so mu2 is the refractive index of second medium and mu1 is the refractive index of first medium and uh, it will be mu2 upon b minus mu1 upon v mu1 upon uh, u will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon r now take mu1 as a common mu1 as a common on both sides what we get we get mu2 upon mu1 upon b minus 1 upon u and if i am taking mu1 as the common it will be mu2 upon mu1 minus 1 upon radius of curvature r mu2 upon mu1 is mu2 upon mu1 is refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium so it will be it will be or it can be written like this mu1 to mu1 will be cancel out mu1 Uh, this will be cancel out mu1 and mu1 so finally we get 1 mu2 1 mu2 upon b minus minus 1 upon u will be equal to 1 mu2 minus 1 upon r and this 1 mu2 is refractive index of medium means mu upon b minus 1 upon u will be equal to mu minus 1 upon r this is the final final result Dyson-Meyer formula is a relation between focal length of lens, refractive index of lens, and radius of curvature. Is it clear? Now, let us suppose. Let us suppose it is a convex, convex, biconvex lens. It is your let us say convex. We know that lens, this convex lens has two spherical surfaces. This is one spherical surface, and this is. Second is spherical surface. So there will be two focal points, two center of curvature, 
and two radius of curvature and two pole i am saying that the curvature of this lens is av and it is your first surface it is first surface and it is second surface p1 is the pole of the first surface whereas c1 is the center of curvature of the first surface and f1 is the focal point of uh, first surface and this p2 is the pole of second spherical surface and c2 is the center of curvature for the second and f2 is the focal point for the second spherical surface of surface of this convex lens now it is principal lens which is passing through all the points is it clear now radius of curvature of this first surface is r1 let us say and radius of curvature of this second surface is r2 is it clear the refractive index of this lens is mu1 uh, mu2 mu2 where as refractive index where the lens is kept is mu1 means the refractive index of lens is mu2 and lens is kept in the refractive index of mu1 is it clear now let us suppose an object is kept at point o an object is kept at point o on the principal x so what will happen uh, first of all it seems that it is kept in front of the first spherical surface so first of all this first spherical surface will make the image of this object is it clear so let us draw the diagram for this this is incident ray since it is moving from rarer medium to denser medium so it will bend towards the normal and normal will pass through normal will pass through center of curvature so it is it is your it is your refracted ray at this point i now for making the image of this object so by this first is spherical surface we need to refracted ray first refracted ray is meeting the principal x is that point i and second reflect uh, uh, incident ray i am falling across this principal axis so it will be uh, without deviating deviating just meet at point a to this refracted ray so the image of this object o will form at point i let us say i dash now let us suppose distance distance of this object is u whereas distance of uh, this i dash where the image is formed by the first spherical surface is v v dash so what will be what will be uh, formula for this reflection through spherical surface a p1 b so i'm writing here refraction refraction by refraction by surface refraction by surface a p1 a p1 b it will be mu2 upon v dash minus mu1 upon u will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon radius of curvature in r1 it is equation number 1 now look here this i dash will act as a object this i dash will act as a object for this second surface a p2 b means this will act like an object for the second surface of lens that is a p2 b so a ray of light will a ray of light will a ray of light will fall from this object at this point but in this case what happens my dear student in this case ray of light is moving from ray of light is moving from denser medium to rarer medium so it will deviate away from the normal so i am saying that it is your it is your normal it is your normal for the second so it will deviate away from the normal so second ray i am sending across the normal so here the image will form and let us say final image is form at point a final image is form at point uh, final image is form at point i is it clear now in this case i am writing here refraction through refraction through refraction through second surface second surface that is what is the second surface second surface is a p2 b a p2 b 
let us say this uh, since i def is acting as an object for the second surface so here the value of u will be v def and the final image is forming at point i so let us say it is uh, indicated by v so here the formula for the second spherical surface will be equal to this will be equal to mu1 upon v minus minus mu2 upon v def and this will be equal to mu1 minus mu2 upon r2 it is equation number equation number 2 now i am adding equation number 1 and equation number 2 means 1 plus 2 from i am writing here from 1 plus 2 we get what we get my dear student student look here it is mu2 upon v def and here it is mu2 upon v def it is plus and it is minus so it will be cancel cancel out finally we get mu1 upon v minus mu1 upon u and this will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 and here mu1 minus mu2 i am taking minus as a common so it will be it will be mu1 upon mu1 upon v minus mu1 upon u and i am taking mu2 minus mu1 as a common so in bracket we get 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2. I am taking mu1 as a common, so we get 1 upon v minus 1 upon u, and this will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 in bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r, 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r. Is it clear? Now, it will be, it will be, it will be written like mu1. In bracket, one upon v minus one upon uh, u will be equal to mu two minus mu one, and in bracket one upon one upon r one one upon r one minus one upon r r two. One upon v minus one upon u is equal to one upon one upon f. So it will be mu one into mu one into one upon f will be equal to mu two minus mu2 minus mu1 in bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so finally from here we get we get we get 1 upon f will be equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon mu1 and it is 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 in bracket so it will be 1 upon f will be equal to mu2 upon mu1 minus 1 In bracket one upon r one minus one upon r two. So finally, finally the expression will be finally the expression will be one upon f will be equal to two one mu two one mu two minus one in bracket one upon r one minus one upon r two. So one upon f will be equal to mu minus one in bracket one upon r one minus one upon r. it is known as lens maker formula means the focal lens of this lens 1 upon a will be equal to mu minus 1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 where mu is the refractive index of this lens with respect to the first medium where power of power of power of lens power of lens power of lens is defined as the reciprocal of focal lens means the reciprocal of focal length is known as the power of length it is clear the unit of power is unit of power is i am writing here power of power of length power of length p is equal to 1 upon f and the unit of power p is 1 upon meter it will be meter inverse and it is known as diopter it is known as diopter indicated by d so if i write the lens maker formula that is 1 upon f is mu minus 1 in bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so it will be equal to p mu minus 1 in bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 is it clear so this is the power
now after after knowing the power of lens we have to know the power uh, focal length of focal length focal length of combination of focal length of combination of combination of combination of two combination of two lens now there are two case in this case let us suppose we have two lens a focal lens f1 and f2 and in this case both the lens are in contact with uh, in contact with each other so these are two lens and both the lens are contacting each other and the focal length of first lens is f1 where is the focal length of second lens is f2 so the combination the focal length of combination of this lens 1 upon f will be equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 is it case a when both the lenses are separated by a distance t means it is the first lens of focal length f1 and it is second lens of focal length f2 and distance between lens is d so the focal length of combination of this lens will be equal to 1 upon f will be equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 minus d it will be f1 into f2 f1 into f2 so this is the focal length of combination of lens when two lens are uh, in contact with each other and when they are separated by distance d so this is the focal length of combination that is 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 minus d f1 f2 is it clear now we have to see the magnification magnification of magnification of lens we are going to see the magnification of magnification magnification of magnification of lens magnification of lens magnification m is defined as height of magnification m is defined as ratio of height of image height of image to the height of height of height of image to height of height of object means it will be h i upon h o is it clear now let us suppose we have we have a convex lens and it is principal axis and an object ab is kept in front of this convex lens so it is a ray which is falling parallel to the uh, principal axis so after reflection it will pass through the focal point for making the image of this object ab we need two refracted ray i have drawn the first refracted ray now second uh, refracted ray i am uh, passing through the optical center o so it will not deviate and both the refracted ray are meeting at this point so here the image will be formed it will be a dash and b dash is it clear i am checking here two triangle one is the eob and second one is the uh, a dash b dash a dash b dash a dash b dash and a dash b dash and both the triangle since this angle is 90 degree and this angle is 90 degree and here this angle will be equal to this angle so uh, two angle of these two triangle are equal so triangle eob and a dash b dash o will be congruent to each other so the uh, ratio of side ab upon a dash b dash will be equal to equal to uh, oe oa upon oa dash what is ab ab is uh, tell me ab is the height of object so i am keeping here the value of ab that is height of object and a dash b dash height of image so it will be height of image and this will be equal to uh, this is the distance you know this is the distance oa which is the distance of object so it will be u and 
it is the distance of image it will be z now i am applying the sign convention sign convention is we are moving in this direction opposite to the incident ray so it will be minus and this u will be u will be also minus so from here we get h i upon h o h i upon h o will be will be will be uh, v upon v upon u so magnification magnification m will be equal to v upon v upon so it is the formula for magnification 